One of sculpture's most fascinating features is its ability to breed sounds from other sounds. And to do so, I'm going to call up a preset. There's one here called Factory Bass Electric Fingered Bass. This is a great preset because the person who programmed it put different sounds in every morph point. There's one with harmonics. Here's a muted one. This is the bright sound. And a different bass sound. This is excellent programming because as I move the morph cursor around, I get these different bass sounds. Listen. And notice how it transforms between these different morph presets. And you can see the transformations on Sculpture's faceplate. And notice that when I land on a morph point, that morph point is selected, and that's controlled by the auto select command. I just turned it off. So now I can move around without selecting. Now that you've seen the morph pad in action, let's get down to some breeding. When you control click on the morph pad, it brings up the morph menu parameters. The upper section is your copy and paste commands. The lower section lets you determine what parameters you wish to breed. Right now, the center point on the morph pad is selected, so I've asked it to copy that selected point and its presets. Now, where am I going to paste it? I could paste it to a selected point, I could exchange it with another point, or I could paste it to all points. And that's what I'm going to do, effectively making all points equal to the center point. The morph points around the morph pad are all equal, but not for long. It's time for the randomize control, which enables us to randomize all of Sculpture's selected settings by a percentage determined by this little fader. 100% would be quite extreme. Let's bring it down to something more reasonable, say 10%. Now when I click the random button, Logic's controls will move plus or minus 10% from their current positions. We also can select what controls we wish to alter. We can choose the string material and media, the objects and pickups, and or the filter and wave shaper. Note that even though the filter and wave shaper are turned off, we can still randomize them, although we won't hear them. The same thing is true with the objects. All of their settings, except the type and the gating, is available for randomization and breeding. This includes the placement of pickups A and B and all of their points of excitation. You can also choose to randomize the string material and the media, which alters the inner loss and stiffness characteristics of the string along with the media loss. As I mentioned in previous chapters, the tension modulation control can be a little unpredictable, so you can select all except tension modulation, which is exactly what we're going to do. We have one more choice to make, and that is which points do we want to target for randomization? The top button is all five points, which includes the center point. Since I pasted our sound to all of the points, our center point is our parent point. We're going to keep that the same and just randomize the four outer points by clicking on the random button. Now all of the outer points have been randomized, and this is what it sounds like. Ten percent isn't a lot of randomization, but you can hear the subtle changes as I move the morph cursor around the morph pad. Now I'm going to select a specific point and make that point the new parent. There, let's choose that one. Notice now, on the pickups especially, you can see these little ghost images. And on the object's controls, you see these little red dots. They show us the current setting of the morph cursor. And as I move the morph cursor around, you can see the ghost settings move around too. 
So let's make this position of the morph cursor on the morph pad the new parent. And we do so by copying the position of the morph cursor into the center point. Control click on the morph pad and we can go up to copy current pad position. Once you select it and release, the copy is made. So we've copied this current pad position and now let's paste it to all points. Now all points of the morph pad will be this new parent sound and we can start the breeding process all over again. Now the whole pad is the same. The whole purpose of breeding is to create new instruments. I like this sound and since it was bred from a factory preset, I've chosen the save as command and I'm going to rename it as electric fingered bass one. This way I'll know it's a child of the electric fingered bass preset. Every time we save a new generation, we're creating a sonic family tree. What makes this really cool is that every time we breed a new generation of sound, each new generation retains some of the characteristics of the previous generation. But as you increase the amount of randomness, their similarities will become more and more different. Okay, let's randomize the outer points again. There. So as I move this morph cursor around, I'm searching for a new parent sound. One that has characteristics which are worthy to pass on to the new generation. This is truly selective breeding. In a sense, it's survival of the fittest, too. There, that's the one I want. Let's breed it. Copy the current pad position and paste it to the selected point, which is the center point. The center point works great when you're breeding because it becomes the parent point and the four outside points can then be used as children and randomized. Whenever you breed a new sound and you like the sound, it's a good idea to save the setting as you go along. That way you keep a record of the lineage of each of the new sounds that you create. Let's audition the two sounds that we've made so far. That was the current one, and here's the previous one. Okay, now we're ready to breed electric fingered bass too. But this time, we pasted the current pad position only to the center point, leaving the outer points as they were before. So when I introduce randomness to the outer points, well, those are going to be two generations away from the original center point. One little click, there we go. You can use the copy and paste techniques in the morph pad to create many, many different ways of breeding. It all depends on what you copy and where you paste it to, and then what morph points you randomize. Oh, that's a nice mellow sound. Let's use that one as our new parent. So I'm going to copy current pad position and paste it again this time to just the center point. Now I'm going to put auto select back on. That way I can use the morph cursor to select the points. Let's mess around with point D. You don't have to use randomization to change the outer points. You can do it by hand. For instance, I'm changing the damping qualities of object 3. And I can change object 3's excitation point, creating bass harmonics. And all of these changes are stored only on point D. And once I find that harmonic that I'm looking for, I can go in and play with media loss too. And then I can morph between my center point, which is the parent sound, and this new setting that I made at point D, which is more like a cousin than a child. Now in point A, I want a more mellow sound, so I'm going to change the string material, giving it a little bit more inner loss and add a little more damping. Now I'm not really breeding. I'm taking one sound and systematically developing it. And I can still morph from my center point to any of the outer points. Let's make point B something entirely different. I'm going to turn on the wave shaper and accentuate it at point B. 
by selectively changing some of the outer morph points, you can build a timbral palette that you can use in performance. So that's the basic concept of breeding and building instruments that you can perform using the morph cursor. Now it's your turn, so have fun.